Our world really needs a morale boost. Plus, I need something to lift my own spirits. Maybe you do too. And it's June Pride. I'm Thomas Roberts. This is Gay Good News. Hey, everybody. It is great to have you with me today. It is June the 17th. A Wednesday for you, and we are off and running. We've made it to Wednesday so far, and I really do appreciate you tuning in for today's show because it's going to be a great show. I am so excited to announce that we have a lovely sit-down interview with the one and only Kathy Griffin. Yes, so I've been working on that and trying to make sure that we had it perfect for you. So it was down to the wire today, so that's why you may notice I was a few seconds late getting on because I wanted to make sure that everybody was here what Miss Kathy has to say, and it's some good stuff. We also have some unfinished business to deal with with our poll that we had up since our last show on Monday. Nickelodeon over the weekend had put out a tweet in support of Pride Month, and it put up a couple of its characters, also one of its character actors, and SpongeBob, and everyone then assumed that SpongeBob might be gay. Now, the creator had long said that SpongeBob was asexual. According to ABC News, uh, the creator of the show was a man named Steven Hillenburg. Hillenburg said that SpongeBob uh, was not gay in an interview stating that he was asexual, uh, much like an actual sponge <laughs> is asexual. Uh, Hillenburg died, though, in 2018. He was a marine science uh, teacher before uh, the popular cartoon ever took off, but we had the poll up on our website, wanted to find out exactly what you thought about whether or not Spongebob is gay, or straight, or asexual, but here were the results we got. 76% say yes, Spongebob is gay, 36% say he is not, all right? We're going to have to redo the numbers on those. I don't know why uh, we should have it add up to 100%. Jen and I are both not Matt Wizards. Uh, Jen Kane, who helps me produce this, uh, <laughs> we've run into some struggles before on our polling. Uh, but uh, this is maybe Nickelodeon's way of uh, trolling everybody because, as we know, the creator had said a long time ago that SpongeBob uh, wasn't gay. And maybe this is a way just to, you know, uh, tweak up some interest because the tweet actually said that it was for LGBTQ uh, and allies, which SpongeBob certainly could be an ally. That is for sure. So I don't want to waste any more time on my bad math or polls because I'm a much better interviewer than I am a math major. So take a look at this as we sit down with the wonderful Kathy Griffin. Two-time Emmy and Grammy winning comedian. She is one of a kind and dare I say, a woman I've had a crush on for many a year, the only Kathy Griffin. Kathy, it's so good to see you. Oh, I love her. I'm going to do, you know, in social distancing, I'm my own crowd. Oh my God, she's here in person. Don't worry, I'm going to put in applause. I'm going to put in all this stuff like roaring laughter and the fans are going to go wild for this. Yeah, I would like a, a safe standing ovation. Now, um, I want you to know that I'm still working, you know, I'm doing my own hair and makeup. Can you imagine my level? <laughs> It's it unimaginable. Um, but I'm trying to set the bangs, and I was hoping you would accept me as I am. So I'm going to do the big reveal, and we'll see. This is a very deep topic. I hope you can keep up. I accept we'll you in full. <laughs> now, what do those things do? Let's explain to everyone. What are those big clips? Those okay. clips are normally By the way, like as if everyone wired. watching isn't a hairdresser. Okay. So, um, or, or a hag like myself. These are just clips that aren't like really like hard. So I'm now going to use um, some powder that was given to me personally by a lady named Stevie Nicks. Ooh, we gotta love that. Name dropping right off the gate, honey, right off the gate. And um, so I'm just trying to figure out how, you know, everybody else, how to keep the thing going. But I thought, you know what, for Thomas, I'll leave the clips in. What do you think? Do Wait, I, do I shave my scene. head or can I keep I it? It looks great. It's adorable. <laughs> It's perfect. And is that all how you right. keep your hair? Is that how you keep your hair so naturally curly all the time? This is my real hair. This is just, I just, I'm giving in, honey. I am giving in. I got, okay, I got the lashes on for you. But it's, I'm just scrunching and this is who I am. And I, I don't want to go back to blow drying my hair or any, any of that old world stuff. Oh, I want to ask you, yeah. do you have a, like a pre COVID, the movement, financial situation like do you have a word for like old world and new world or like you know no 
Not really. I mean, I'm curious to see how people refer to this time. Like, I kind of like, BC, like before Christ and stuff, before COVID, yeah, yeah. after COVID. <laughs> kind of, because you know, I mean, really, this thing, you know, I mean, for me personally, obviously, you know, I'm very open about having a huge problem with this administration, and you know, then all these things piling on. Remember, remember how long for three years people kept saying like, well. How's he going to handle, like, he hasn't really been tested yet. So he had done quite a bit of damage. So, which gets me to um, nice ruling on Monday from the Supreme Court. I know. I don't have total faith in Neil Gorsuch. I, I just want to, you know, I know that the uh, centrists are going to be like, oh, he's not so bad. My fear is that John Roberts, who, you know, in my opinion, humble liberal opinion, didn't take the impeachment nearly seriously as he could have, et cetera. But my fear is Gorsuch like gave us this one, but then he that gives will take it away. Right. And so it's like that's candy what, trading, candy trading behind Yeah, so I'm afraid the next bill, which will probably affect either LGBT folks or it all affects all of us. Then I'm afraid Gorsuch will be the one to, whether it's, you know, an important healthcare bill or an equality bill or a, um, you know, a, well, I don't know how they're going to go to the Supreme Court with, with police reform because it isn't just police reform, but it's a lot. So how do you take it in? You're a smart guy. You've dealt with this stuff. How do you process well, it? Today, obviously, today is a big win because I think that, you know, we, we look at this uh, or, or what happened this week is a big win. We look at this uh, in the greater picture, picture of things and with marriage equality, while that was a huge, huge win and it got me that Emmy back up there. Uh, yes. For, for our breaking news coverage, this really deals with everybody in the community yeah. so that you can have a job and you can feel safe in that job. Not everybody's going to want to get married, you know? Right. So, I mean, this is a, this is a really big deal. And certainly for people that are, are living in the shadows or they're, they're living in fear of being, uh, how about people being I, I fear people work. being put back into the shadows too. I really feel, um, you know, it's been a long time, you know, I lovingly say my gaze cause I'm such an old hag. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I haven't been this worried about my gaze since like I started decades ago, like learning what canvassing is and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's, it's a, a I, I have like a mommy feeling of, you know, still guys, we, you don't know where it's coming from. And right. I, as a whitey, like I get it. I'm not invited to the cookout. I didn't earn it. That's, you know, I get it. But I do think, like you said, the Supreme uh, Court decision on Monday I think these things are happening because more and more regular people, meaning either white or straight or religious or not, they, they do know these people. They know gay yeah. people. And I'm, I'm hoping that as part of the BLM movement, with or without the Supreme Court, because we don't know how that's going to stay, but I'm hoping we can just keep making strides forward in that direction because same thing. You know, I think it's obviously the, the Brown. I love the Browning of America. It's like, great. We actually haven't been doing such a great job running stuff, especially the men. No offense, except you, except you. Um, no, look, I mean, get, you know, get more women, get more everybody than who's been there. Uh, because the only people that are going to change uh, systemic racism in America are white people calling out other white people and yeah. getting white people out of positions where they get to make policy and letting other people get into those positions where they know where they've been left out before and make And they live it change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah they live it and so um i have to say i'm feeling a lot of optimism about the kids i loved when david chappelle said um you know i don't want to drive the car you guys are doing such a good job of driving the car i'm happy to sit in the back seat if you need me you know <laughs> uh but yeah i i i want to think that you know positive stuff will come out of this insane phase well and that's why it was really important to do gay good news to do this yeah. type of show and to have on people from the LGBTQ community and to have on our straight allies so that we don't let June pride go by without the recognition for the achievements that we've gotten and for, you know, all the hard work that still needs to be done because, you know, the minute that we get complacent or take our eye off the ball, uh, that's when, you know, you lose stuff, you know? And well, if we, we're seeing lazy. it through our very eyes. I mean, I am, you know, 59 years old and truly never in my lifetime did I, and I kind of vaguely remember Watergate because it was such a big deal in our house, meaning we were all Dems and everything. But um, this is, you know, uh, Gloria Steinem, if I can quote her, I'm doing a lot of name dropping. Um, she has this great thing. I, I saw her.
if the BLM movement says, hey, we don't want to do a combo BLM and Pride because we're kind of working so hard on this lane. And I really respect that the gay community didn't get like offended. And yet look what happened. It was yes, uh, I, I live in Los Angeles, I should reveal that. But yesterday, um, I'm sorry, on Sunday, when the gay pride happened and BLM marches have been happening every day, night, there was, I thought, a really respectful, um, respectful integration. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like the gay community tried to do it like last year with like the DJ booths and all that other stuff. And honey, don't even start with me because I go back to LA Gay Pride when the streets were still open when some of the guys would dress up as Dupar's waitresses. Um, <laughs> then there were the guys that dressed up as cheerleaders. They would actually, what's funny is watching, well, funny, because you gotta look for Calum and Pride because we're kind of working so hard on this lane. And I really respect that the gay community didn't get like offended. And yet look what happened. It was yes, uh, I, I live in Los Angeles, I should reveal that. But yesterday, um, I'm sorry, on Sunday, when the gay pride happened and BLM marches have been happening every day, night, there was, I thought, a really respectful, um, respectful integration. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like the gay community tried to do it like last year with like the DJ booths and all that other stuff. And honey, don't even start with me because I go back to LA Gay Pride when the streets were still open when some of the guys would dress up as Dupar's waitresses. Um, <laughs> then there were the guys that dressed up as cheerleaders. They would actually, what's funny is watching, well, funny, because you gotta look for comedy to everything, is watching the news of how um, protesters are like closing down streets. Yeah. I'm like, oh girl, the gays have been doing that for Pride Fest every year. Are you kidding? <laughs> you got a drag queen with a fabulous outfit. She is out there twirling in front of a car. And I remember the one of the first times I went to Pride in Los Angeles, like seriously, like in the, I guess it would be the mid 80s or something like that. I'll never forget. There was this couple driving down Santa Monica Boulevard. They just, I'm just going to say they just looked like, oh, I didn't know quite what was happening. <laughs> and, you know, literally it was just like guys dancing in the street and there right. were the dolphin shorts and the hags and, you know, all the, the whole thing. And this drag queen just goes up to this car. <laughs> was, I don't know why it was so funny. Just goes, you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> and it wasn't scary. It was just cute and kitschy. And the people weren't scared. And no police shot anybody. And there were no rubber bullets. So uh, one, thing, one thing I think is that um, I'm just so, I, I do feel optimistic in, when it comes to the LGBTQ community. And I'll say it. It's the same reason I've always said. And I say this as a, as a, happy and sometimes bitter feminist, when I'm talking to my feminist girlfriends, I'm always going, we have to learn from the LGBT community. They know how to mobilize. They get people elected. They vote down ballot. And so I will say the one thing that's gratifying is hearing so many people get excited about voting down ballot because I am all down ballot all the time. Frankly, I think Mitch McConnell is probably worse for the community right now than even Trump because he's the one who's stopping any progress from even reaching the Senate floor. How, how, how are the gays sort of getting like uh, getting through this phase? I mean, besides, of course, everyone wants to get laid way more. Uh, and OnlyFans. Well, isolation makes you horny, apparently. Isolation yeah, OnlyFans has blown up. I mean, yeah. influencers are just OnlyFans. But like, <laughs> do you feel like, do you feel like as a gay man in the community, there's like, you fear things are getting more conservative again? Or do you feel a little hopeful or what? I think I feel hopeful, uh, you know, and that's, that's the way we've always got to feel. Um, yeah. That's also the reason, again, why I wanted to do something like this, because I was feeling kind of down, you know, yeah. I was feeling kind of blue about where we were as a country sure. uh, and things that are coming down the line at us, and especially with the election in November. Uh, and th after isolation, we aren't going to have a minute uh, to take the month of June uh, yeah. that we annually do to have these moments to celebrate achievement and celebrate members of the community yeah. Uh, to know and mark those milestones uh, and to have that kind of be blunted uh, the way that it has been and rightfully so because of COVID. Uh, but to have that blunted, uh, I don't want people to forget. I just don't want yeah. people to you know, lose track of, of where we've been and, and how far we still need to go. Um, and also, I, I, you know, and I, I really believe this, I believe the LGBT community, perhaps more than any other community in the United States, in my humble opinion, is the best at keeping awareness going, um, keeping stories personal. Um, and so honestly, I, I, I look to the gay community as a template for, for, you know, like I said, just as a woman and as a feminist and for other groups as well. So it is, I will say it, it is hopeful that, 
you know, the, you, you don't hear certain gasps anymore when you say, you know, oh, I have a friend who's trans, you know, like yeah. those, at least those days are over, at least, you know, in, Let's a, hope in so. LA yeah, or something really like that. Hope so. I mean, because 2020, for the most part, has sucked. Oh, I my mean, God. Has really sucked. And I, I don't even you know, have a phrase for it. It's just it, like WTF. Yeah, and, and and I know it's been it's been tough for you. We lost Maggie. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I know on Wednesday you put up a really nice post for your mom, who would have yeah. been a hundred. A hundred. I know. That's so crazy. It's it's so hard because I totally like I don't expect people to feel like, uh, okay, Kathy, she, you know, you had her until she was ninety nine. Like, what are you complaining about? It's just that that particular disease, dementia, um, Alzheimer's. I don't even know which one she had. Frankly, they seem pretty similar, but it's just, it always hurts when it goes and it gets someone's mind is so whip smart. Yeah. So I get it. She was older and you know, the walker and stuff, the other old, old age stuff that didn't really get her. But I think it was just, it's just sad losing a beautiful mind. If yeah. I can quote uh, a film, you know, well, I mean, you know, your biggest fan in heaven. Now you've got this guardian angel that's looking down over you to, you know, Clear any brush out of your way for the rest of 2020. So tell us what Kathy Griffin is up to for 2020, the rest of 2020. Okay. It's, first of all, it's bizarre. So just like I'm sure everybody else is like, okay, what do we, you know, what do we do? So um, I will tell you that I have been uh, out pitching shows. And when I say out, I mean sitting in this chair virtually pitching shows. <laughs> One thing that I'm, I'm actually, I have two shows out now. I mean, you know, who knows? But anyway, one thing is, I have to be honest, I found a lot of people that I'm pitching to kind of don't acknowledge COVID. <laughs> like I actually pitched, pitched a show that I thought could be like a socially distant show, mm -hmm. but not, you know, looking really obvious in a way. And so, and we'll see, but they were kind of like, oh, like I've just been hearing a lot of like, we just, we think the, you know, TV season or whatever, it'll, it'll be delayed like two weeks. So I admit I have a little bit I have to be honest, I feel that in Los Angeles, we're not really taking it as seriously as my New York friends. And, you know, for example, they, they report the, the cases and deaths every day on the news, mm -hmm. but they don't say like where the clusters are. And, you know, so I, for one, um, am pitching a lot and all my pitches and anything I have in mind is for when everything is safe. So I'm not going to be that first one doing a gig at a casino on the first weekend because, you know, we just don't yeah, know anything. There's no, no we reason just to don't take, know anything. Yeah, there's no reason to gamble like that. Right. Know? No reason right, whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so touring, though, I mean, that's uh, kind of on hold forever? Touring is on hold. Well, we don't know what it's going to be. I mean, I, um, you know, uh, I, I have some ideas about how to do a special literally in my house and, you know, sort of make that part of it. Um, but as far as, you know, that, that's not a money thing. That's just like a fun thing to do. Yeah. Oh, wait, like my film, Seen in 62 Countries, available, Kathy Griffin, A Hell of a Story, available in 62 Countries on Vimeo and Amazon. Anyway. Uh, what so a hell of a just, story, too. Did you Oof. like it? Oof. I know, it's a story. Um, and so, you know, I'll try to do that. Like after I was, you know, canceled after the Trump picture, you know, I did a world tour, which I'd never been able to do. I made the film, which won a bunch of awards, which just means a lot to me. And I love that people can see it, especially in 62 countries, especially in countries where it's not so easy to be out and proud and out right. and gay and countries where they don't have pride and all that other stuff. So that that's very, very gratifying. So I'm just going to keep doing stuff like that. I mean, as far as money gigs, I'll be honest, I got nothing coming down the pike and I don't know what's coming down the pike, but I'm just going to keep trying and trying and trying and hustling and hustling. And, you know, I, I write down comedy stuff all the time, every day. And I don't know about you, but my, my sort of thing is like, I'm kind of like ready. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't have an outlet at this moment, but I am not kidding. If HBO called, I could do a two hour special tomorrow. Well, oh, darling, uh, I got a bolt, but I love you, and I can't I thank you enough for coming on and joining us for gay news. Thank you for 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 um, facilitating a way for LGBT folks to celebrate. I mean, look, we don't know. Hey, if there's if there's any LGBT folks that are hiding in their closet watching this on the computer because it's you been told it's not okay to be gay. We're here for you. We love you. We see you. We hear you. We know you're there. So thank you for doing this, Thomas. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. I'm very Kathy. proud of you. Get it? Proud of you. Right. Bye.
Isn't she the best? I mean, we had a lengthy conversation. And just so you know, there's even more with Kathy. Over on our YouTube channel, we cut out a certain chunk where Kathy talks about her uh, battle earlier this year with what she thought was COVID. And then also the shows that we are binging currently right now. So you can find out exactly what is on Kathy's mind there. But uh, I just love that woman. She has been around, uh, luckily, in my life since 2007 when I lived in Los Angeles. Uh, and I was working for E.T. and the in Insider. Uh, a man named Brad Bessie was the executive producer, one of the executive producers. And he invited Patrick and I over to his house for dinner. And we went to his house for dinner. And lo and behold, as a surprise guest, Kathy Griffin was there. Uh, and so we have been friendly uh, ever since, and she is just fantastic. So uh, a great friend of the show. Now, the other big news that we've been following this week is what the Supreme Court did on Monday, this landmark decision protecting the LGBTQ community from uh, workplace discrimination. It works in two facets against sexual orientation and sexual identity, protecting uh, those two things from being a reason why an employer could fire you. So I wanted to hit the streets, and mainly I wanted to hit the park to find out exactly what people are thinking about it. And I found an old microphone in the closet, and I thought, gosh, it's just missing something. So look at the interviews that I did and see if you can figure out for yourself exactly what was missing. Mitha, what was your reaction to hearing that news? I was super excited. I thought it was a big win. You think it's about time? Most certainly about time. Thank you. Thank you. She wasn't that easy? You're the best. I think it's amazing. I, I think it should. It's, it's long overdue. Should have been here a long time ago because, you know, it's all love. So, you know, as long as we love each other, that's all that matters. Yeah. For, uh, you said you were out yesterday taking protest pictures. Uh, you know, how do you think that these times intersect with a decision like that from the Supreme Court, but also what we're seeing right now with uh, Black Lives Matter? Yeah. I think we're all fighting for rights, and I think it's important for everyone to have equal rights, whether it be gay lives, whether it be black lives, white lives, everybody deserves to have their rights heard and appreciated by government and everyone else. So yeah, I think it's important on all ends. Everybody needs to, you know, get equal rights. Morgan, thank you, sir. What's your reaction to, to hearing about the Supreme Court's ruling? Um, I think it's awesome. I feel like something like this is long overdue, so this is awesome news, great news for everyone. Definitely great news for everyone. But did you notice uh, my mic flag? So I wanted to put something together so that the microphone looked a little more formal uh, for jumping into the park. And so this is what I put together. <laughs> uh, and I want to give you the backstory of how this came to be, the birthing of this mic flag. <laughs> So I need to make my logo. Talking to. So I'm gonna try to do that. I'm gonna use this, that big knife. I'm gonna try to use that cardboard and make a logo box. Wish me luck. Okay, just wanted to give you a status update. So I took the little box and I carved that hole into it so that the microphone can go through it. Now I need to figure out how to properly get my logo on the sides. Mmm, I don't know. So I took a glue gun that had like silver sparkles in it. Not a glue gun, but like a, um, like a sparkly glue pen. And I found these stickers. Mmm, I think I'm gonna do better. Okay, we got really good news. So producer Patrick just found us this, a box of sticker letters. Wait, that one, a box of sticker letters. So I'm gonna try this, stay, stay tuned. Okay, so I think I'm making some progress. What do you think? Right? Just good in the light, right? Just don't, have, just don't get too close. So now this is the finished product. As you see right here, this doesn't exactly fit, sticks out. What do you think, Producer Patrick? I think it looks fantastic. They're all backwards. Are they backwards? No, we're 
seeing them backwards. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, that, right? Is out the window. Look at this. Uh, da, 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 da. I made a new one. So the nice people over at Michael's Craft Store uh, helped me get a new mic flag. So when I go out onto the streets, I'll look a lot more professional, which I'm very excited to do. Isn't that nice of them over at Michael's, the craft store? Uh, they were a big help with that. The other great thing that I wanted to pass along is the Advocate Magazine. They gave us a nice shout out for what we're doing here at Gay Good News. So you can check out the article online. Uh, very nice shout out. They support what we are doing here and they sent a nice tweet as well. And then the other thing that I told you I was doing is... Who's control? Who's control? Who's control? Who's control? TikTok. Yeah, which I don't think I'm very good at. That was a draft TikTok that I saved because I was too embarrassed to put it out there. So send me your TikTok recommendations and directions on how to do it because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to TikTok, but I want to try. And maybe Patrick and I will do one together uh, because as you can see, he is very, very funny. Very, very funny. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. I'm not going to tell you who's coming up on Friday. I just want to keep the suspense going for as long as I can because you're going to love it. But I want you to come back here Friday, 5 o'clock, and we are going to have another great episode for you. But I just want you to remember, just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean that it's not happening. Take care of yourself, everybody, and I'll see you on Friday.